Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Fondon and I'm the author of the new book, Twin Flame Romance, The Journey to Unconditional Love, available now in paperback, Kindle, and Audible books. And if you're currently reading Twin Flame Romance and would like to leave a review on Amazon, which would be greatly, greatly appreciated, go ahead, leave a review, email me a screenshot once that review is up on Amazon, and I will send you a promotional code for an audible copy of my book, Chakra Healing for Vibrant Energy, exploring your seven energy centers with mindfulness, yoga, and Ayurveda. Again, welcome back. If you're new to my YouTube channel, welcome. Please subscribe below, hit the bell for notifications, and give the video a thumbs up. If you're interested in getting a Twin Flame reading with me, I just want to say thank you so much for your emails, your likes, your subscribes. Thank you so much for those of you that have booked readings with me. We have a great time doing these readings and coaching and very enlightening. I just want to let you guys know that now that I'm reaching Thank you so much, nearly 10,000 subscribers. And maybe by the time you view this video, it will be over 10,000 subscribers. But I cannot respond personally to each and every email. It's just not possible. I don't even try, I don't do it. I, I like hearing your stories. I'm not always able to read those emails. But the best way to have answers to your questions or clarification of your twin flame situation is to get a reading and coaching session with me. I do 30, 60, and 90 minute readings. I do regular lifestyle coaching as well. You can go to fondandwellness.com. You can email me michellefondandauthor at gmail.com to book your session. But that is really the only way I can respond to you is with that one-on-one -on -one individual time with me. So today we're going to talk about your twin flame's perception is their reality. Now for some of you that know that I get channeled messages from my angels, sometimes a lot more than others, but also at sometimes really odd or inopportune times. It's very strange. So yesterday, I happened to be at the gym super early because I had to bring in my little kitten Luna to be spayed. It was time, yes, little Luna. She's still very tiny, but little Luna hit her six month mark and needed to be spayed. And I had to take her into Los Angeles, the city to be spayed. I had to have her there by 6.30 a.m. I was at the gym at seven, which is so early for me, you guys. Usually I'm hitting the gym about eight to nine a.m., but never seven, and I had to wake up at five. I didn't get to bed till midnight. I had to pick my mom up from the airport, but it was funny. It was toward the end of my workout. I work out for like an hour and a half, four days a week. I'm doing this bodybuilding program, which I love, and it was at the end of my workout that I got this flash of inspiration of what this video needed to be about, and it's always like at these really weird times. Like I was comatose, you guys. It was way too early in the morning for me to be working out. I was hungry, I hadn't really eaten, my blood sugar was low, but I had this like flash of inspiration. It's funny, the angels always bring it to me at the times where I'm not doing super phenomenally well physically. I don't know why they think I'm more receptive maybe when I'm not all like spunky and ready to go to the next thing or activity. And it was super clear to me. For a lot of you guys, especially if you're a divine feminine, I'm gonna address this to both divine feminines and masculine, but. I really believe that this is more pertaining to the divine feminines in the collectivity because of the topic matter. And the reason is because the divine masculines in this collective typically happen to be a few steps behind the divine feminines. And that's really why. It's because the divine feminines, they're a little bit ahead of the divine masculines on this spiritual journey. They're usually a little bit ahead when it comes to the sense of enlightenment or spiritual awareness or listening to their intuition or having that awakening into what this connection actually is. Therefore, I believe that this video is really to help the divine feminines in the collective or the person in the couple that's actually a few steps ahead than the other person in the twin flame dynamic. Because you have been blessed as the person who is more awakened to the path of the twin flame connection, that you've been blessed with this knowledge, but as I mentioned to my twin flame, is that it's also a curse. It really is, it's also a curse. And my twin flame and I were having a conversation probably back in February or March of this year, where I was, it was weird. It, and I talk about this in other videos, but he was 
saying to me, you know, I think I might be a little psychic. And he proceeded on to tell me a story. And I just looked at him and I'm laughing to myself because I never tell anyone that I'm psychic. I never, ever, ever tell anyone. Well, no, he's my twin. Okay. I know this, but I just, I, that's generally not information I'm super forthcoming about because it can be perceived in a lot of negative ways. And I never, ever want people to believe something other than what it is. And unless you're willing to be open to listening to the conversation about what it is, then you can automatically go to more of the negative side of things. And I just, I don't want to open up that can of worms. So if somebody asks me, then yeah, I'll, I'll divulge the information. Or if somebody's talking about it themselves, I will divulge the information, but never, never voluntarily. I will never offer that voluntarily. My twin says to me, back in February, March of this year. Yeah, I, I believe I'm a little psychic. Again, proceeds on to tell me his story as to why he believes so. And he's really not typically the person that would say something like that. And so I offered the information. I said, yeah, you know, I'm psychic. And I told him my whole backstory. And he's like, he was super impressed. He's like, oh my God, really? Well, you're gonna have to like teach me and all of this. But he did have that opening to this is something, not the connection necessarily, that he wouldn't necessarily admit to it, but he did admit to being a little bit psychic and like having that heightened sense of intuition. Now, I believe at that time he left it at that, <laughs> meaning like this whole thing about soulmates and twin flames and soul connections was something he wasn't really readily willing to accept. And when you look at it from the perspective of you have all of this information as a divine feminine or as the person that's a few steps ahead on the journey. So you have this awakening, right? You have this realization like, oh my gosh, this person is my soul and we are destined to be together. And so therefore this connection is a sacred journey. This connection is a sacred connection. It's a sacred journey that we are designed to be together, to develop and grow together, as well as to perform missions in life together. And you have this realization, but as I mentioned to my twin when we had this conversation, when he thought that me being psychic was, oh, that's so cool, I said, yes, but it's a blessing and it's a curse. It's a blessing because you're able to more readily, if you listen to divine guidance, you're able to be better on your life path. So you don't have to make so many course corrections again. If you're listening to divine guidance, that's totally your choice. You can make the choice not to listen to divine guidance, but if you are listening to divine guidance, then yeah, it, being psychic makes it a little bit easier to stay on your course and path. However, the knowledge of what is to come can be a burden, can be a curse. Because when you have that knowledge and you don't have a timetable to that knowledge, then it can be a sticky wicket because then you have an expectation of something happening and when it doesn't happen according to your timetable, then it becomes a curse, right? That knowledge becomes a curse. And therefore, when you have this knowledge, when you have this gift to be able to foresee something that is much deeper and something that is meaningful, that's supposed to be part of your life path and purpose, then you have to have the maturity and wherewithal to be able to withhold information when appropriate. Because even when you're, I mean, even when you're psychic, even when you are very much in tune to your higher self's intuition and when you receive messages from the angels and guides and divine beings, of course, that there comes with that a great responsibility to be discerning. And that means you don't like spread it out all over the world. You don't tell everybody about it. You don't predict the future for everybody in your, in your environment because maybe those in your environment are not ready to hear the messages that you need to share with them. So that's why it comes with great responsibility and great discernment. So yes, it's a blessing, but it's also a curse. So with that, when you confront your twin flame about the divine journey, when you confront your twin flame about, hey, we're soul connected. Hey, you're my twin flame. You're my soulmate. We're destined to be together. And when they're not ready to hear that information, when it, it's not coming to them from a space that is open for them, like they, they've been opened to receiving that information, 
it can almost seem like the information is imaginary or made up or just wishful thinking or dreaming. What I really believe my angels wanted me to express to you is that your twin flame's perception of some of the information that you're giving to them is their reality. Let me give you an example of when I told my twin flame that we were soul connected and that we were destined to be together. And it was, it was pretty early in the journey. And I know for him, there was a lot of denial going on there. It was a huge amount of denial about the, the nature of the connection. And it's not that he didn't have feelings for me. I know he had feelings for me. I know he knew he had feelings for me. I believe he really thought at that moment that the feelings were more lust. It was more a sexual attraction. It was more, oh, I really think this person's hot, so let's get it on type of thing. I don't believe that consciously he felt that, oh, this could be a long-term relationship. Now, one of those reasons, it had nothing to do with me. One of those reasons is that he had just come out of a serious relationship in which he was really hurt. So that was one reason. I was still kind of in another relationship. That was another reason. It wasn't, you know, it was kind of like on again, off again, but it was also, it wasn't completely over. And so that was another reason, obviously. And at that time, I think just for me to come forth and say, hey, guess what, twin flame? We are twin flames and we are still connected and we're soulmates and da, 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 you know, going on and on and on and on, sending them articles and videos and all this information. His little response to me was like, stop sending me weird stuff. That was his response. Stop sending me weird stuff. Now, for me at that time, when I had that realization of this is what we are, it was so crystal clear to me. It was so incredibly crystal clear as to what we were, the nature of our connection, the nature of our relationship, it was so clear to me. Like, it was clear as day. And for him, it was, what is she smoking? Like, for him, his perception of my reality was like, what in the world are you talking about? This makes no sense at all. That's not what we are you're just talking crazy talk. There's something wrong with you and there's something wrong with this situation. Like his perception was, this is a cool girl who I like, who I'm attracted to. We have a sexual attraction to each other. We've spent some time together, had a great time, but that's all it is. That was his perception. So his perception was totally different than my perception. Therefore, our realities were different. So that's one thing that I really, really want you as a twin flame, probably divine feminine, as a twin flame to understand that the perception that your twin flame has makes up their reality. The perception completely makes up their reality. And there's nothing you can do to convince them otherwise. They have to figure it out for themselves. For my twin flame, for example, like I did not accept that his perception was his reality. No, I know, like I said, I know he, from the very beginning, I know he had deep feelings for me. I know this, I could perceive it, I'm intuitive, I'm a psychic, you know, that's all that. But also like you can see with their actions, what what their eyes say, what their soul says, like you can see it. As a twin flame, you're very much in tune to your counterpart. On a conscious level, he was not perceiving it. So for me, being a divine feminine, seeing all this, I was very much upset that he wasn't seeing it. For me, I thought in the beginning, and for many of you that are starting your journey, you may feel the same, or maybe you've been on this journey for a year or two and you're still feeling the same. For me, I felt like he was making it up. I felt like how, if I see this as clear as day, how can you not see this? That was really the basis of a lot of our struggles was that I was seeing things one way. I was perceiving our connection as one thing. He was perceiving our connection as another thing on a conscious level. And even though on a subconscious level, he had a lot of love for me and 
affinity. And I say this in every twin flame video. I know from the beginning, subconsciously, he knew, oh, Michelle is the person I'm gonna marry. He knew that from the very beginning, but his perception on a conscious level was something totally different. And for a long time, for many, many months, I was fighting that perception. I was fighting him on that perception rather than accepting that his perception was his reality and still is his reality. You could have two different people, same situation. They perceive the situation in two different ways. Therefore, their realities are two totally different things. Let me give you an example. Have you ever had a sibling that you grew up with in the same household around the same time? Maybe the sibling is a year or two apart from you and you're talking about your childhood with your sibling and you're like, yeah, I remember Christmas is this. And your sibling says, no, I remember Christmas is this. And you look at your sibling and you're like, were we raised in the same household? And you had the same or very similar experiences but the perceptions that you both took away from those experiences created realities that were totally different. So if you have an example like that, then you probably know or you're probably getting to know what I'm talking about. Another thing is, have you ever taught a child, for example, to jump into the deep end of a pool? If you've ever taught a child to dive into the deep end of the pool and they're really, really afraid of diving into the deep end, then that's another perception of reality. For example, if you just say, you know what, jump into the deep end, you're gonna float, you're not gonna sink. Even if you sink, you're gonna float back to the top. You know how to tread water. We've been talking about this. I've been teaching you it in like the three feet. You know how to do this. You can jump into the deep end. And their perception is, if I jump into the deep end, I'm going to sink. So what happens if you push them into it? What happens if they jump into the deep end of the water, they're gonna start sinking. They're gonna forget how to tread water and they're not going to be able to stay afloat because their perception is if I jump into the deep end, I'm going to sink. Same thing if you teach your kid and you push them to like ride a bike and they're not ready to ride a bike. If you let go of my bike, once we take off the training wheels, I'm going to fall. And they keep saying that, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. You're not gonna fall, you know how to do this, we've been working on this. No, if you let go of the bike, I'm gonna fall. What happens? You run with your child holding onto the seat of the bike. They start riding, 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 and you let go. Once they realize you've let go, that's when they fall because that's their perception. Their perception is, I've told myself this story. This is what it is. This is my reality now. I want you guys to really think about this because what it's going to do for you, it's going to alleviate a lot of tension and pressure from you. And also it's gonna allow you to have a lot more love and compassion for your twin flame as well. Because the situations with twin flames are often very difficult, especially in separation and especially with the on again, off again as well. And we talked about this in previous videos. It's that the person who is a little bit more ahead on the twin flame path can easily look to their twin flame counterpart and go, why don't you see things the way that I see things? You're just faking it. You're just pretending. You really know that we're so connected and you really know that we're destined to be together and you're just not looking at it the right way or you're just denying it. And when in reality, that's not the case at all. In reality, their perception is telling them a totally different thing. So their reality is different. So if you keep fighting their perception and their reality, that's all it's gonna be. It's gonna be you guys butting heads and it's gonna be a fight all the time. But if you relax and just accept your twin flame for where they are in their journey, whether they say, I just wanna be friends or this is just a sexual connection or this is a hookup or I don't think we can be in a relationship right now because this is not what I want. And believe me, I know a lot of twin flame couples, which I have read for, where it's so clear all the angel cards and everything show that this is a twin flame connection or they show, especially for the one who is less further ahead on the path, like oftentimes the cards on their side, so most likely the divine masculine side, they'll show like all these love cards and connection and commitment. And then they're saying, well, my twin flame says to me, I'm not even attracted to you. So it's like that incongruence. I'm gonna post a video on incongruence. Uh, also, I talk about in my book, Twin Flame Romance as well. 
So if you want to hear that video on incongruence in Twin Flames, go ahead and click on subscribe as well and hit the bell for notifications so you're notified of when that new video comes up. But it's that incongruence of what's in their subconscious mind and what's happening underneath and on the heart level and the soul level and then what's happening in the physical world, like on the surface level. A lot of times I'll even see that in the twin flame, usually divine masculine, as I mentioned, will say to the divine feminine, no, I'm not even attracted to you. I don't know what you're talking about. We're friends, that's it. We're nothing more than friends. There is no sexual attraction here. It's just leaving the divine feminine in this situation saying like, that makes no sense because I see the way you look at me. I see the way you talk to me. I see how you make these little like inside sexual jokes or innuendos. Like why would you do all that if there were nothing more than friends? Like it's just this very confusing, confusing reality for the person that's a few steps ahead. But just know that even though they are telling you one thing and you are seeing another thing, your intuition is telling you a whole other thing, that just accept that their perception, how they are perceiving things right now, is their reality. Their perception makes their reality. That is it. That is all you need to know in order to come to a greater amount of acceptance, of love, of compassion with them, and to be patient with them throughout their journey. So I hope this helped a little bit for you to understand about how perception creates reality, because it really does. Honestly, it really, really does. Have you ever had someone who you didn't intend to be mean to or like disrespectful to, but that person considered you to be mean or disrespectful and you're like I just said this like I totally did not mean that like I don't think anything bad about you but that person totally perceived it to be something like that was mean or disrespectful but for them that was a reality so really that's what I'm talking about and so the more you can wrap your brain around that the easier it will be for you to just extend that grace towards your twin flame so thank you so much for joining me thank you for subscribing to my channel below hit the bell for notifications give the video a thumbs up thank you for sharing this video with other twin flames and we're doing our patreon private party podcast if you would like to join for January's podcast just subscribe below at Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash Michelle S. Fondon, and I will see you in the next video.